only gone and bloody done it. We've only gone and done it, baby! Yes! We got the championship, baby! We made it! Come on! Woo! We got the championship, baby! Well, yeah! That's right, folks, back once again with another match review, this time picking apart the deciding match. That's right, Doncaster Rovers up against Blackburn Rovers. Now, if you are new to the channel, which you shouldn't be at this point, but if you are, hit the subscribe button, look at your bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers, and now we are a championship club. Once again, folks, once again, at the first time of asking, uh, just take a look at these scenes here, Blackburn Rovers celebrating shortly after the final whistle uh, when we uh, finally sealed the deal Thanks to an 80th minute header from Captain Captain Fantastic, Charlie Mulgrew. My oh my, are we lucky to have such a player of his quality? I know he had that bit of a nightmare last time out against Peter with his with a with a headed goal in the uh, in the in, in his own net. But this time he 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 I don't know he made up for his his bad errors then by putting the ball in the back of the right net this time. And what a time to do it! Ten minutes to go. And oh my goodness, it, it, it was it was it all started out so well that the the evenings football started all so well. Rovers, you know, they didn't look, but we to be honest with me, we looked fantastic. We looked fantastic in the first half. We just didn't have enough to put in the back of the net. We had two or three golden opportunities to uh, to win it. Well, not well, not to win it, to at least get our noses in front. But we were denied by goalkeeper, by uh, sloppy sloppy pitch conditions, whatever. We were denied. Um, and then elsewhere, Wigan were losing, Shrewsbury were losing. But in the second half, things started to get a little bit hairy. Uh, uh, Wigan uh, equalised, Shrewsbury equalised, Shrewsbury took the lead. Things were not going right because obviously, you know, a, a win for Shrewsbury and a draw for us, and it goes on to the next game. But thank heavens for the for the big man. What I, I, I say it again, we are so lucky to have such a quality player as Captain uh, Charlie Morgan. I look forward to him being under a great manager, a fantastic manager, as in Tony Mowbray. I just read the statistic, lost one game in six months of football. But anyway, let's talk more about, just let's, let's get this tied up. Let's get this tidied up. Let's take a look at the statistics. For the 51% possession for Rovers, eight shots on target, six for Doncaster, two shots on target for Blackburn Rovers. Five for Doncaster, 11 corners for Rovers. That's where the goal, goal came from. And 15 fouls for Rovers. Let's take a look at the start of 11. First and foremost, our hosts, Doncaster Rovers. And credit goes to Doncaster. They gave us a right good going over. And obviously, they did beat us at Ewood Park. So, you know, we leveled the playing field a little bit. But anyway, Morosi and goal. Old Park, that's Paul Cook's favorite player. Baldry, Butler, Mason, Houghton, Beeston, Blair, Whiteman, Marquise, and the veteran culture up front. How about Rovers? That's how they lined up. Ryer and goal, Bennett. Lenahan, Mulgrew, Williams, Evans, Dak, Smallwood, Armstrong, and Conway. Uh, on of, of course, big DG up front. So how about my match rating for the players? Well, take a look at this. Ryer with a 10, Bennett with a 10, Lenahan with a 10, Mulgrew with a 10, Williams with a 10, Evans with a 10, Smallwood with a 10, Armstrong with a 10, Conway with a 10, Dak with a 10, Graham with a 10. Did I give Mulgrew a 10? Well, I'll give him 11, sir. That's right. He deserves it. He had the most important uh, uh, touch of the whole match, and that was floating, floating his ball in the back of the net. And I did say, I, I've done this reaction video. I watched the whole game and I recorded my, my reaction. Uh, and I said in that coverage that I would do a special video in honour of whoever scores the wonder goal that gets us promoted. And fortunately, it was Charlie Morgan and not Elliot Ward or any uh, daft player, Paul Caddis or anything like that. But it is the skip of Charlie Morgan. Now, I'm going to do a special video. It's one of them ridiculous ones that I'll, I'm going to say Charlie Morgan's name 100,000 times, but I'm going to do it in honour. Well, not in honour, but I'm going to do it in a chicken suit. That's right. I'm going to do a chicken suit and I'm going to say Charlie Morgan's name 100,000 times. I'm not going to do it right Right here right now i'll do it on a special video maybe maybe sometime next week but anyway fantastic what a, what a player to have and hopefully uh, we will secure the bulk of this team for next season obviously we do have some loanies with armstrong in there and we also have antonson uh, jack payne the most useless man on the planet but he will get a uh, little bit of recognition because he was one of the team one of the members that helped us get promoted but thank heavens thank heavens for the big man uh charlie mulgrew uh and and i i also i thought I'm just a little bit, little bit lost for words. 
uh, surprisingly, to be honest with you. But Lenehan has been been a class uh, class player to have at the back end of the season. It's like I've had a brand new player uh, from January, February when he came back into the squad, and I think he has helped us tremendously at the back. Have we lost a game with Lenehan at the back? We might have lost the Plymouth game. Um, he might have been involved in that, but who cares? Who cares? What tradition? What a tremendous bit of form for Rovers. We are now only, if you look at the table, one point behind Wigan, two games left to play. We've got to take on Charlton and then we've got to take on Oxford. I know they have to take on, uh, I think, either MK Dons or, um, or uh, Wimbledon. One of the two. But who cares? We're promoted. We're in the championship next season. We're going to be taking on the likes possibly of Stoke, Southampton and West Brom and the like. Probably, probably Preston North End. Um, as well so some real good nights of football coming back to Ewood Park and maybe just maybe we can get our act together and start building a, a, a decent side under Mowbray because he is a, a footballing man who what nugget what nugget in their right mind would have appointed uh, Owen Coyle in the first place he's the one who got us relegated or well, that whole that whole structure got us relegated but now things are starting to look a little bit decent we've got a, the right man the right man making the decisions he's made some fantastic signings this season and he's done it. He's done it. He's done it. So full credit to him. Anyway, speaking about the man himself, the myth, the legend, the superstar, that is Tony Mowbray. Let's have a listen to what he had to say shortly after the final whistle as Blackburn got themselves promoted. It is bouncing, to be honest. It's really amazing to see how, um, how professional people um, all year and listening and taking it in can turn into small children like people <laughs> very quickly but um, oh, listen, at the end of the day it's been, it, is a, it is a long long season and, and you were there at the start of that for losing the first two games that home game against Doncaster the fans let the team know that it wasn't good enough and they expect better and um, the great thing is that they reacted, they've lost one in 33 is it now it's, um, and we're going to try and make it one defeat in 35 if we can and, and, and let people make their own judgments on whether the, the players care about the jersey, you know. it's um, So, yeah, I'm, I'm pleased for the players. I'm delighted for the fans, of course, um, because the club are now hopefully facing in the right direction, heading back upwards. Um, it's a big summer for the for, for me to, to hopefully to go to India and, and see if we can get some help and... Um, you know, there's going to be a lot of clubs in that championship. I think, you know, with, I was trying to work out the other day with maybe up to 12 with parachute payments, including the three who are coming down. And it's probably not the time to talk about money and budgets, but my mind does because we want to try and compete. Like Sheffield United have competed, like Millwall have competed, who, who, who've come through the League One. Why can't you use the momentum and the, and the camaraderie of your group to try and punch above your weight next season? And um, my thoughts instantly turn to recruitment for the summer um, where we need to improve what we need to do and um, yeah but tonight the players are enjoying it the dressing room's quite wild you know there's a lot of them young lads who live in a world of social media and so there's a lot of phones pointing at people's faces and singing songs and stuff and you'll no doubt be able to see all them you probably don't understand them but I'd like me you know I don't do social media but um, yeah I, I might be doing you a, dis a dis disservice but um no, I'm just happy for everybody, really. I was just saying there to the guy. I looked at my te uh, looked at my phone. I had 98 texts there within half an hour. It just shows that people care. You know, there's there's people out there who might not come to every game or you don't speak to every day, but um, they care and they want your football team to do well. And um, that's really special that people take the time to uh, congratulate you. Um, well, like I said, I've obviously won a league with West Bromwich Albion. Got to the Premier League, which is pretty special. I've had playoff finals. Um, as a, as a player, my last ever professional game, I won at Wembley Stadium with Ipswich Town to win a playoff final to go to the Premier League. So I've had some big days, some big nights. It's, um, but just delighted for this club because it was spiralling in the wrong direction. I think it's um, with a lot of negativity, a lot of people unhappy with what was happening, and um, this group of players have managed to galvanise with each other and, and, and turn that negativity into a positivity this season and just you can see the supporters are probably overexcited tonight after the game but um, it's understandable I think after the torture that they've had for a few years and um, we have to try not to uh, let them down next year and be as I said be competitive it's important that everybody pulls in the same direction and, and, and so hopefully we, we have an ambition next year to to give it a real go. Yeah, listen, any, any football manager, particularly in modern day football right now, um, you can see it's some really high profile football manager in the Premier League, you know, you, you're only one or two results away from having real negativity and um, 
I haven't really felt that, and yet I don't follow social media. I don't read the newspapers. I've told you this before. I don't listen to phone-ins. I have to focus on my job and do it how I believe it's right. And um, and so whether there's been much negativity this year, I, I don't know. I don't feel it, but I do feel the support of the people who've, who who come to the games and, and see the team. I think they want to see the team fight and tackle and chase and close down and win balls and play forward and create chances. It's because Blackburn is is like where I'm from. I'm from Teesside, Middlesbrough. It's an it's an industrial area. People work hard for their money, and and that's what they want to see their football team do. Which is what I've tried to bring to this group of players that I expect them to run and tackle and chase, and the fans definitely do. And if we can add the quality as we had with this year with the likes of Bradley and and Danny coming to the fore, you know, scoring important goals. Charlie Mulgrew, who, who's never seen a centre half score. Derek Mountfield in 1987 scored similar sort of amount of goals that Charlie Mulgrew scored, and, and he obviously got a crucial one today. So um, there you go. Happy enough. Let's let's. I want to try and finish off two games. We've got a massive game, a great game that won't have any pressure on it for us. We'll just go and try and play and enjoy going play at Charlton, a, an ex Premier League stadium, and um, got some very good players at Charlton Athletic, and, and, and young boy is doing very well with the team, and so it's a big test for us, but. We're quite proud of, of no defeats in, you know, one defeat, sorry, in 33 games. So we'll go there and try and keep that going. Yeah, listen, I, I, football management's a strange one, really. Sometimes you make a wrong turn in your career, and sometimes, you know, I've, I've, I've made maybe two emotional decisions in my life and my football career. But I, at, um, for, for emotional reasons, really, and they were probably the wrong reasons at the time. But, but um, I've got every faith that I know to run a football team and, and get inside. Football, because I was a footballer for 18 years. I know what makes them tick. It, you have to inspire them with words at times and give them a cause to fight for. And I could see that they were a good set of lads. So we did have one problem pretty early on at this football club when I got here, but we managed to eradicate it. And um, and then the group galvanised. And, and after that, you know, I, I talked to you the other day after the unrest of an early season with three international breaks, a new team, 12 new players. After that. The, the, the stats are there. One defeat in 33 games. It's um, at any league. It, it's unfair to say, oh, it's Blackburn Rovers in League One because you cut your cloth. We're a League One club, and um, and this group of players have, have deserve amazing credit to go on a run like that. It's um, it should be lauded, and uh, yet we do know that next season is going to be tougher and more quality, better players against us, and we're going to have to uh, step up and, and work extremely hard to uh, to try and win football matches next year. Now you know a little bit what the gaffers had to say, but a little bit what I've had to say. What's been going on social media? Well, it's exploded. It's absolutely exploded, and I've only can I only can give you a little bit because I've run out of time. Anyway, David Dunn, ex Rover, uh, superstar midfielder, the uh, Bradley Dack of yesteryear. Anyway, well done to all the first team players and staff led by the gaffer who's turned the club into such a positive place. Fantastic season for the club. Special mention to all the sports that continue to support a fantastic club and a little pick there. Also, some of the players involved and some of the players of yesteryear as well. Adam Armstrong, promotion baby. Woo! And a couple of little champagne bottles. Harry Chapman, he might not have been involved in the back end of the season, but he says this. Third promotion in three years isn't bad, is it? We are going up. Obviously, he's, been, he's, he's, he's refer, referencing himself. He's got promoted with what? Uh, Bradford, not Bradford, Sheffield United, uh, Middlesbrough or something like that. I don't know. I don't care about his, his back, back history, but he did get promoted with us. He's part of the team. Ryan Niembe says, we bounce back, up we go. And a bit of a rocket ship there, ex-Rover Matt Janssen, one of my favourite players. He goes, Rovers, boom, and with a double little uh, soccer football thing. Also, Michel Salgado was t was tweeting as well. You deserve it, Rovers. Proud of having been a blue, even for a short time. My life in England was amazing because of the fans. We love you too, legend. Meanwhile, Jack Payne, promotion, buzzing. Boop, boop, boop. If he can do anything, he can tweet. Uh, meanwhile, Nuno Gomez, an ex, another... Uh, he might have been signed under uh, uh, you know, questionable times, but still, he was a quality player. Obviously, not really for us, but uh, well done, Rovers. Congratulations, fans and all the club. Staff deserve it. Come on, you Blues. Meanwhile, Grey Rover in amongst all those celebs. My nervous rash has broken out. I think I have to put some cream on it. Well done, Rovers, and a huge thank you to Tony Mowbray. Tommy Hobart, ex-Rover. Would we like to see him back in a blue and white half? I'm not sure how he's getting on at Watford or if he's even somewhere else. Anyway, buzzing for everyone at Rovers. Great club. Back moving in the right direction. Scotty Wharton was in action for Lincoln. What a night. Class performance tonight from the boys. Big 4-2 win for Lincoln. And Rovers getting promoted. Getting fist pump. Woo!
Woo! Uh, meanwhile, over the BRFCS forum, everybody, everybody amongst everybody is coming out of the woodwork and getting their voices heard. MG Pensioner said this, the crowd are on the pitch. Well done, Tony Mowbray. Meanwhile, Doug, well done, Rovers, and Tony Mowbray. What a great season. It is a great season. When you look back at the times where in the championship, especially under, under Owen Coyle and even Paul Lambert, Losing all those games is not really a good uh, feeling, you know, week in, week out. But winning games, obviously, it, 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 it puts a smile on your face. But I, I've, never really, I've never really managed to fully enjoy the season because Shrewsbury have always been there. And that is a massive credit to Shrewsbury because, you know, they've made it such a tight race. You know, we've, been, we, we've lost one game in six months and still Shrewsbury were sniffing on the door. So full credit to them. And I said it in my instant reaction video. I, I'll say it again. I would like to see Shrewsbury go up with us. Uh, in, in, you know, obviously they're, they're going to have to set up for the playoffs. But, you know, they deserve it. Top the, top the table for a good portion of the season. So let's see if they can do it. Anyway, Tom says this. Yes, yes, yes. We're Blackbird Rovers. We're on our way back. Meanwhile, Riverside returns. Fabulous effort by TM and the boys. So proud of the traveling army. Trinidad Rover, wonderful stuff, fantastic from all involved, especially from the after the bad start. I will be celebrating tonight in Lima. Not sure there are many Rovers fans in Peru. I'm sure they're in there somewhere. Jack and Ori said this. We are up. Thank for that. Well done to the team and Tony Mowbray. We did it the Rovers way. Never easy, but we are there with a couple of games to spare. Now for the title. Meanwhile, Rover in Vaness. Phew, my heart is absolutely racing. Longest injury time in ages. Meanwhile, Blue Boy 33333 says, get in. Is there a pitch invasion? If not, why not? How about Gavilar Somerset Rover? Still got a shot at the title too. Congrats to Tony, the boys, and every one of us. Enjoy tonight, guys and girls. Meanwhile, Jim MK2. Well done, Rovers, and well done, Tony Mowbray. Poor division, and we're out of the first attempt. Poor division, but tough division, solid division. I know that we only lost, what was it, five games so far this whole season? And, uh... And, uh, and, 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 well, there's still two games to go, but they are, there are some difficult sides here. Peterborough, uh, um, Plymouth, Scunthorpe, Rotherham. They're all, they're all good sides, and I think they could all get themselves uh, into, into reckoning for promotion. But maybe next season, um, and, but it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough for League One. Whoever's in League One, Sunderland, they may think they're going to come in and walk it. Um, but they need to they need to get their acts together as well because we got bitten hard the first couple of games of the season. Anyway, uh, Bennis from Heaven, great night, great season. Let's rebuild this club. I agree. Proud to be blue and white. Indeed, it's not great. Only great news. It's against the chicken pluckers' rotten ownership. Give Tony Mowry money. Get us back to where you took us from. I still won't ever forgive you. But onward and upward for a great and beautiful town and team. Chris Price, bold spot. Tight like Ewood, it's going to happen. Love you, Charlie. Love you, Tony. Love you, Rovers. I'm the greyest, well, I'm the gayest straight guy in the world right now. Meanwhile, Erie, 3382. It's weird. Happiness and relief. Congrats to the away fans. All season done us all proud. Let's worry about next season in a few weeks. We haven't had any reason to celebrate for years. World well one, Tony Mowbray and the whole, oh, maybe. Well done. Well done, Tony Mowbray and the whole squad. Gogger. Congrats to everyone on here. Mulgrew to the rescue. Looking forward to the video of Bennett celebrating with the fans. Had to see it a few times on iFollow. Goosebumps indeed. Goosebumps indeed. Anyway, let's take a look at the results that matter on Tuesday night. Wigan were held 1-1 against a Bristol Rovers side. We knew they were going to be tough. They gave us a good game. Uh, and, you know, obviously I think it was a similar result. Was it 1-1? And right at the bottom of the pops there, Shrewsbury 3-1 winners over Peterborough, which pretty much ends their promotion push. And if we'd slipped up, if we could only have managed a draw, they would have been right back in it. That's how massive that goal is by Charlie Morgan. Massive, massive, massive. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to take a long earned, break, uh, long earned rest. But to be honest with you, it's brutal. It's brutal for me because I've got to go get, get back into the office. That's right. I took a half day uh, to try and watch this game in a bit of peace and comfort. But I have to, I have to face the music and go into the office, which sucks. But it's going to have to, it's going to have to be that way. That's pretty much all I've got for you today, folks. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, please. Let's, let's try and push this video to at least, can I be cheeky and say 50 likes? Can I be cheeky and say 50 likes? Come on, boys. If you get 50 likes, that means we're going to stay in the championship next season. 
Uh, also, if you have not subscribed to the channel, make sure you do so. And we can follow me and follow Rovers as we journey back into the Championship next season. And try and build something. Let's build something now. Obviously, the momentum is with Black. Luna is going nutso in there. but She's, she's singing for the Rovers. But we have the momentum. We have the momentum. Let's take it into the Championship. Is that right, Luna? We, she says we have the momentum. Let's take it to the championship and try it. Let, let, let's just keep on going. Let's make it a cracking season next season. Uh, obviously, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but if we can finish top 10, I'll be happy with that. Anyway, anyway, i got to get going. I've got to get out of this. I smell of booze. And I've got to go by the office. Anyway, until next time, you'll see me. Uh, I will probably have more coverage of the celebrations and all that in the preview for the Charlton game, which will be live on Wednesday, so check back on that bad boy. Anyway, until next time, thumbs up, subscribe. Woo! Ciao for now. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. But if you want to check out something completely different, head over to my other YouTube channel. You do that by pressing the button right there. If you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe.